Hey folks, welcome to Deer Corner. Hope you're having a good morning. Um, been answering a few emails. And one of the questions that I've heard and would like a reply on and that's hunting pressure. Now I've seen a whole lot of YouTubes and that on hunting pressure, but hunting pressure, well it depends on what you're calling hunting pressure to begin with. First of all, you're not going to run a deer off. The deer are going to be there. And a good example is, um, and I've done it, I've walked into a stand and jumped some deer, they blew and ran off. But them deer, they came back. But uh, your hunting pressure is uh, a heck of a good topic. Now, deer aren't dumb. Deer are a pretty smart animal. And they move through when they feel safe. And if you're jumping deer at a certain time, that's with, within their time period of when they're coming through. But hunting pressure is also, you can train deer with hunting pressure. And that goes along with a lot of things, um, game cameras, when you go out and do your food plots and putting your stands up and things like that. I mean, putting a, a stand up two, a week or two before deer season is hunting pressure. It should be up at least 30 days or more, in my opinion, before deer season. Before you put a stand up and start cutting limbs. But you can train deer by using hunting pressure. And the reason I brought this topic up is a young gentleman that I know. A little story, make it quick. He hunts public land. He's just actually beginning to start deer hunting. In this area he's hunting, um, he's not seeing any deer. He's going in in the morning, coming out, going in in the evening, coming out. But he's not the only one there. And we were talking about it and I told him, you got a game camera? He said, yeah, I do. And I go, I want you to try something. I want you to try putting that game camera on the parking lot. On the parking lot, yeah. Put it on the parking lot. And he did, and then came back, looked at the pictures, and I just said, well, what time do the people get there? What time do the hunters get there? Come to find out, it's a group of hunters, a group of friends, that were hunting this area. They're coming in before dark and leaving and meeting in the parking lot at 10 o'clock and leave. Then they would show back up at 2.30 or 3 and go back in. So going along with hunting pressure, the deer knows, they know this. The deer know this. Training the deer. Got a thunderstorm coming in. And I said, what you need to do, if I was you, I'd go in at 10 o'clock and come out at 2. And if they're there at the parking lot, how you doing, how's the weather, and act uncoordinated, don't act smart, don't act what you're doing, make them think you're stupid, and go in and hunt. Well, he did that on his second day, he drug a deer out. 
and what happened was the previous hunters, the hunters that were hunting that area year after year, trained the deer. They put the pressure on the deer to move at a certain time. And it's just like here. Just like here at this place. I want to get everything done, all my planning done, my food plots, everything ready to go in the spring. Come July, I will change tactics. I won't go in the woods during the day unless it's a necessity. Need something done. I'll even start retrieving my chips out of my game cameras at night because I want to disrupt them at night. I want the deer to feel safe coming through here during the day, not during the night. So we do a lot of night riding here. Uh, retrieve chips and the food plots. I don't want them grazing in the food plots at night. I'll drive down and drive through the food plots. I want to disrupt their activity at night. I'm not going to run them off. I want them to feel safe coming through here during the day. That's the time you hunt. So, that's just uh, my thoughts on deer pressure and your urban deer. There's another good example. Urban deer. You drive through towns and backyards and that in towns, you'll see the deer at night. During the day, you don't see them. They find a good area to bed down during the day, but at night, they're eating your flowers. And that's a good example of deer pressure and training and moving deer to where you want them. But uh, you got to keep keep in mind uh, some people call deer hunting a sport. In a way it is. Um, but in another way deer hunting as being a sport it's the only time that your opponent don't know your plan. So you're out there calling it a sport and your opponent, he don't know your plan. Deer don't know your, it's a sport. To me, I consider it as an activity of my life. It's something I like to do. So to me it's an activity more than a sport. But yeah, you can change the deer's habit. And the thing is with a deer, they got to have three basic things. Food, water, and cover. And as long as you have that on your property, on your hunting property, you'll have deer there. Now it's up to you how you change their activity and their schedule to yours. So, uh, I hope that helps you some on hunting deer, deer pressure, and some of these uh, videos out here talking about deer pressure. But uh, glad to see you're with me. Hope to see you again. Go ahead and subscribe. And uh, remember, when you're in the woods, be safe. I'd rather be safe than sorry. And we'll see you again.